Hey guys, it's JB3, and we are back with another episode of FIFA 19 Career Mode Youth Edition featuring Morkum FC. In this episode, we will move along here to the end of October. We'll take on Bristol Rovers, and then we'll take on Doncaster. Bristol Rovers is in the relegation spot currently here in League One, so hopefully we can grab three points on them and put us in a good position to try and take close to the top spot here in League One. We're only about seven points out, so we can't take them over, but we can get ourselves in a better position, hopefully get us into an automation promotion permission position here at the end of October, and then we'll end the month and get our scouts back out. We'll see what they can bring in for the end of October, see if we can make any improvements to the squad. So before we get to the games, we have a couple player upgrades. We have Sark. He's going to be upgraded by Long Live Pat Back. If you guys haven't checked out his channel, he is doing a youth edition with Oldham Athletics. So I'll put in a link to his channel. Make sure to go check him out. He has been supporting the channel. So make sure to give him some love as well. Sark here is going to go with the number 11, the undershirt, the high socks, and then the black Nike Venoms. So good luck for him. He's going to get the number change as he probably deserves out on the wing. So hopefully these new boots can continue his scoring ways as he currently leads the team in goals. And we have another player upgrade this time from Sultan Afoot. As you guys know, he does a channel over on Man with Mansfield Town, a youth edition channel. So make sure to check him out. He's always supporting the channel, always leaving good comments and doing great player upgrades. So I'll leave another link in for his channel as well. So make sure you guys check it out. This one is going to be for the new player, Lekkanen. He's going to go with the number 24 that's going to be changed over from Park. Park, you know, probably doesn't have a long future as he's reached his full potential at a 65 overall. So we don't mind giving it to him. He's going to go with the black wristbands and the red Under Armour boots and then the high black socks. So we will get into this first game of the episode against Bristol Rovers. We'll go with our standard starting lineup this time with Barrett in the middle. Our standard 4-3-3, so hopefully we can get into this one and grab another three points. And we'll get this game underway. Sar gets it ahead to Aldaharney. Aldaharney will look wide, get it on to Adebola. Who looks for Billy Hughes. Defenders Billy Hughes sends a through ball on to Al Baharney. He'll fight off the defense. He'll send it across. He gets it to Sark, and Sark puts it in for another goal for Morecambe FC. I think that might be his seventh of the season. He puts in another one. Those new black boots and the new number 11 kit looks good on him as he puts one in. A Corey pass from Al Baharney just lost it right into the middle. Knew he had a lot of space. Zarek takes it on the volley and puts it in for a goal to start this game. A beautiful one from him. A hard, low strike. Gets it right past the keeper, not able to react. And we're up early, 1-0 here against Bristol Rovers. Barrett gets it in the middle field, up to Zarek. Zarek will carry it. Looking for someone. He gets Park. He's behind, and he's going to be offsides, just barely offsides. Would have had a great run there. Would have been one-on-one -on, -one on the keeper, but just a little early. One foot off. Clark, Clark gets blocked by Sark as he goes for the cross. Sark tries to get it ahead too quickly. It's lofted to pain. The header's there, and Awazi's going to be there after Leconte breaks up the cross. Barrett up to Park. Park. Lays it to Aldaharney. Aldaharney looking for some space. Gets it to Romano, who's behind the defense. Has a good angle, and he bangs it off the crossbar. And it goes out. A good buildup from Romano, but he just can't finish. Still looking for that first goal of the season. Sarek quickly on to Barrett. Barrett makes a run here. Looking for Sarek, who fights off the defense. Who looks for Billy Hughes. Billy Hughes one-on-one -on -one with the keeper and fires it into the crossbar. Aldaharney will control it, get it on to Barrett. Barrett will take the strike now, and it gets blocked. Sorry, lays it off to Billy Hughes on a good run here. Takes the strike, and he puts it past him. Goalkeeper couldn't react. Final minutes of the first half. Billy Hughes with another strike and gets another goal. I think that might be his third of the year so far. A good play right on the wing. Good passing, good buildup. The goalkeeper never even reacted. Looked like a rocket shot that went right past him. 
Good pass in Philly Hughes on the wing, uses that pace, and the goalkeeper fell over after the ball went past him. No chance of stopping it. Billy Hughes puts it in, and right at the end of the half, we go up 2-0 against Bristol Rovers. And that'll be the final touch of the first half. Billy Hughes puts it in at the end of the half, and we go into the halftime up 2-0 here on Bristol Rovers. Sark makes a nice run here. He gets it ahead to Al Aldeharney, who will lose it. Lacante is going to get it right back to Sarg into Park in the middle of the field. He'll turn and shoot and sends it off the crossbar. And it goes out. And Park is just unlucky not to put that one in the back of the net. Billy Hughes gets it on in the through ball. He'll look for Park. He'll send it in long to Park. Park will run onto it. Does he have the angle? He sends it in. Smith is going to be there to block it. And Holmes is just going to block it away and send it out for a corner for Morecambe FC. Adipole gets it up to Burns, who gets it on to Dubois. He looks wide for Park. Park is in behind the defense, has a chance. He drives it, and he puts it home. It's 3-0, Morkham FC. Park finally finds the net after banging it off the crossbar in his new number five jersey. He puts it home for his sixth goal of the season, and we take a commanding lead, and this one looks like it's all but over. Just going to try and get as many goals as we can, try and build that goal differential, build that offense. This way we can make sure we can get the promotion here out of League One. But Park puts that one in to make it 3-0. Gomez tries to flip it on, gets it on to Sark. Sark fights off the defense, lays it back on to Gomez. Gomez centers it to Burns. Burns gets it into Dubois. Dubois on to Park. Park puts the shot on and it goes wide of Smith. He gets it blocked in and will go out for a corner. Sarg up to Dubois, who gets it up to Park, who runs out of space, gets it back onto Dubois. Dubois makes a little bit of a run here. He gets it into Park. Park runs onto it, takes the shot, and Smith is going to be there to deny him of another goal. Park pushes it along to Sark. Sark will drive this one, and he'll put it home. The goalkeeper doesn't react. Thought he might have, maybe you thought he was offside, but Sark will get another goal. And those black boots seem like they have some goals in them. As he gets his second one of the game, fourth for Morecambe FC. And it's 4-0 here against Bristol Rovers. Morecambe FC showing their talent. The goalkeeper just doesn't even move. I don't know if he thought he was offside. Defense seemed like they gave up a little bit too. And he'll just tuck it right in the corner there. A nice goal for uh, Sark here in Morecambe FC. Oh, Lacante takes him down in the box. Oh, final minutes of the game. You didn't need to do that, Lacante. You didn't need to do it. Oh, it'll be a penalty shot here for Bristol Rovers. Awazi is going to have to stand strong if he wants to keep the clean sheet. It doesn't mean anything except for the clean sheet for Awazi. They'll line it up. Here he comes, right down the middle. Oh, and Awazi gets his wrong, and we lose the clean sheet on the final touch of the game as Lacante takes down the player in the box. They get the penalty shot, and it goes in, and it's going to be 4-1. Morkham FC to finish this game. We'll get the ball rolling here and end it. Gomez gets it on to Park. He'll punt it long, and that'll do it for us. An absolute destruction of Bristol Rovers. Morkham FC come in and show their weight as a top-sided team. They show why Bristol Rovers is in the relegation zone. Sark with the two goals. Park finds the net as well. And Billy Hughes all scoring. It's a good one. And we show the domination that is Morecambe FC currently here in League One. Only three shots, two on target for Bristol Rovers. 13 shots, nine on target for Morecambe FC. Park finding the net has the assist and the goal of 9.5. Gomez is 6.6. .6. Billy Hughes an 8.2, Barrett a 7.4, Aldeharney 8.6, Awazi a 7.3, only letting up the one goal on the penalty shot. Lacante a 7.7, .7. Magnuson a 7.9, Adabola 8.3, Jan Sorberg 7.6, Dubois an 8.6, Burns a 7.0, Sarek a 9.4 with the assist and two goals, Romano a 7.5, and that'll do it for us here against Bristol Rovers. So we have a transfer offer for Miguel Cruz. They're offering 
$1.3 million. His evaluation on the high side is 1.4, so I think I'm going to try and negotiate that, or I'm going to delegate it, rather. I don't want to spend the time to negotiate it. I think we'll try and go maybe a little above his evaluation, get a little bit more for him. Honestly, Miguel Cruz isn't bad, but he just, every time we play with him, he seems to make an errant pass that turns over that leads to a goal. He always seems to miss marking a man. I don't know what it is. He doesn't have bad potential, but we're going to move him on. We're going to try and go for 1.65 on the high end and no less than 1.3. So we actually have a second transfer offer for Miguel Cruz as well. So we're going to delegate that. We're going to try and go for about the same thing. Maybe we'll try and grab a little bit extra here since we do have the second offer. And we'll go with 1.7 and 1.35. So we will get into this game against Doncaster. They are tied with us in points. They're only a one position behind us. Only the goal differential really separates us at this point. So it's going to be a big game. It's going to be a good test. We come off the big win in our last game. So hopefully the offense can keep their momentum running. Keep it going here. We're going to go with our normal starting lineup with Barrett in the middle. And we'll get into this game. See if we can pick up three points against Doncaster. And we will get this game underway. Well, we should expect goals because this team has got some... Now the Harney holds up. Gets it back to Barrett, on to Sarek, on to Park. Park has good space. Can he find a space around the defense? Can't. It gets blocked. Aldaharney picks it up, but the goalie is going to make a save. Aldaharney couldn't get enough power behind that one to get it past him. Rowe wins the ball and sends it into the middle, but Awazi is going to be there to make a save. Sarek gets it up to Aldaharney. He'll hold it up, get it off to Barrett. Barrett quickly gets it off to Park. Can he beat the defender? He can't. And it'll go out for the throw in. And now a throw in. Lacante throws it in to Barrett. Barrett gets it off to Sarek. Sarek looking for some run. Gets it off to Park. Park finds out the Harney. Gets behind the defense. He's going to launch it. He's going to put it into the top of the net. A good goal by Alda Harney to put it into the net. A good pass from Park. All he needed was the crease, and he found it. He gets behind the defense on a good run, and we go up early 1-0 here against Doncaster. And we show why our offense is so good, so potent. Lots of guys running forward. Park had either Sark or Aldaharney to give it to. Aldaharney finds the crease in the defense. He's one on one and he's not missing from there. Morecambe FC go up 1 0 early in this game against Doncaster. Crawford moves it up. He gets it to Marquez. Marquez gets it to Crawford. He gets tied up, and Owasi's going to make the diving save and keep it out as Doncaster tries to answer right back. Barrett gets it up to Romano. Gets it off to Park. Park holds up. Looking for Lacante, gets it to him before the end line. He'll send it across. Sarek is there and puts it on, and it goes out. Sarek down the middle, flips it on to Billy Hughes. He'll run onto it. Final minutes of the first half. Billy Hughes stays with it past the defender, gets it in. Can he find Romano? And he can't. It'll be headed out for the final touch of the first half. And that'll do it for us. We go into halftime here at the Globe Arena. 1-0. Alda Harney finds the one offensive shot. He gets the crease in the defense, puts it in to give us the lead against Doncaster in an important game as we need to grab three points so we can stay on top of them. Gives us a little bit more space in the tight table here in League One. Barrett gets it off to Sarek. Oh, Sarek takes him down and it's going to be a penalty. Oh, it's going to be a card for Sarek as he comes in hard to start off this first half, trying to break it up after the long pass. And he'll grab the yellow there. He'll line this one up. It goes in, and the keeper will be able to punch it away. Park will control it, though. Get it on the Alda Harney. Alda Harney holds up. Looking for Sarek. Sarek loses it for a minute, gets it back, right into Park. Park in front of the net. Oh, and it's going to be deflected and saved by the keeper. Reef in front of the net. Park couldn't bury it somehow. Alda Harney will get it on to Billy Hughes, who gets it back to Park. Park, another try, but he's taken down in the box. And they're not going to call a penalty. They're going to say they won the ball. 
And Doncaster on the return. They get the shot off, and Owazi's going to be able to deflect it out. They try to counter. They get out on the run quickly, but Owazi's there to save it and send it over the bar out for a corner kick for Doncaster. And Doncaster will line up the corner kick. It'll come in, and the header's on, and Adebola can't make the clear, and Whitman's able to put it in. Owazi just never reacted. I don't know what he was thinking there. We'll have to see the replay. Oh, and it's the gold Adidas boots. That must have done it for Doncaster. They tie this one up after we make the change. And it's six, 65th minute. They'll go with the corner. It goes in, and Awazi just never really reacted. I guess it goes wide. We couldn't mark the first header, and it goes off. Adabola gets it, but he's off his head right off the post. Just unlucky for Awazi. Couldn't really do much about it. I guess it wasn't really his fault. Adabola probably should have done a better job. But unluckily hits the post as he tries to clear it. Barry gets it up to Gomez and can. Morkham FC counter. I'll get it up to Miro. Miro will drive and take one too many touches. And he gets buried in the middle of the field with an absolute truck stick. So we will make our final change. Victor Magnuson will come on for the ball. Barrett. He's been asking to get into the squad, so we'll bring him on for the final six minutes, see if he can make the difference and get us a game-winning goal. Rowe lays it off to Ben K. Magnuson's there. McLaughlin gets it up to Crawford. Magnuson will make the interception. And that'll be the final touch, though, as we can't win the ball back. Make one final push for the offense to get the final score. We tie 1-1 here against Doncaster. It's a tough tie. It's a pretty even game. We played well in the first half, but not as well offensively in the second half as Doncaster draws one back and we split the points and probably keep us tied in the table. Pretty even shots, pretty even possession, so that tie is probably well-deserved for us. We'll see how we did here. Park with the assist gets an 8.6. Billy Hughes is 6.8. Romano is 7.2. Sark, 7.4. Barrett, 7.1. Wazi is 7.3. Lacante 7.6. Magnuson a 7.5, Adabola 7.3, Sorberg a 7.1, Aldaharni a 7.7, Victor Magnuson a 6.1, Miro a 6.0, Gomez a 6.1, and that'll do it for us here at the Globe Arena as we tie Doncaster. So we do have an agreement for Miguel Cruz. It'll be for $1.65 million, so we will accept that and see if we can move him along and get him out of the club here in January. We also have another accepted offer of $1.5 million, so we will accept that just to have a backup, make sure we can sell Miguel Cruz on. So we have our final report back from Ireland. We only have one player that will bring in, Jason Campbell. It looks like uh, could be a good defensive player for us here. He's 64 to 82 potential, so not great, but we need to fill out our defense a little bit more so you know he can just at least take up a roster spot until we can get some better players in there so we'll bring him in he does have a value of 120,000. so worst case scenario we can always sell him on but he does have good height so hopefully that will help us out at the back line for maybe a cup squad so we are here with our final report back from colombia we do have a couple players we have maldonado maldonado who we will not bring in only because we do have another goalkeeper here in Vasco Fuentes. He's 6'5", overall range of 51 to 71, potential of 74 to 94, and a value of $850,000. Could be a real good goalkeeper. He's 17, so we'll bring him into the squad, maybe replace Amaral, who seems a bit unhappy at the club, maybe doesn't think he's playing as much as he can, but... One of them hopefully will be able to be sold on and maybe make us a little bit extra money for the transfer window. So we are here for our final month here in the Netherlands. We do have Marvin Visser who does have good potential but with a low value and we do have a lot of goalkeepers. Normally I would bring him in but his value is only $60,000 so I don't really just want to waste my time by signing him and then trying to sell him on. We don't, we aren't going to use regen, so we don't need a ton of money here in the transfer budget. But we do have Daniel Decker, who is 51 to 77 overall, potential of 71 to 94, 
59. Looks like he could be a pretty good offensive player, maybe a winger, hopefully a striker. I don't think we've had more than maybe one true striker in Francisco Tavares. So we'll bring him in and see how he can help the club with a value of $950,000. So we will send our scouts back out and Sultan of Foot has asked us to scout South Africa. So we'll go to South Africa for physically strong and then we'll go to New Zealand for an attacker. And then we'll also send out our final scout over to Poland for any, see if we can bring back some more offensive players, maybe get some strong defensive people from South Africa. So we'll have to see what our scouts bring back in the next three months. So we have our youth academy here. We will go through here. We have Daniel Decker, the player we just brought in from the Netherlands, who starts out as a 65 overall. He's 71 and 94 potential. I think I'm going to leave him in the youth academy just because he isn't quite good enough to get the start yet. So I want to wait, give him some training, and then we'll bring him in after next season. This way we don't start the clock too early on his contract. I want to give myself an extra year so we don't have to pay him too early. Then we have Marad Ramsey, who's a 6'5 goalkeeper out of Egypt, 82 to 88 potential. We have Lissandro Aguirre, a central defensive midfielder. Nice big height, 6'3, 80 to 94 potential from Colombia. We have Liam Kennedy, 74 to 90 potential central forward out of Ireland. Alfonso Vergara, who are just waiting to turn 16. Seems like he's been 15 for two or three years now. He's 64 overall, potential of 86 to 92, so should be a good left back with a 6'6 height. We have Thomas Cano, who's an 80 to 86 potential. I might just bring him in once we sell Cruz on in in January, so we'll just keep him there for now, just in case Alfonso Vergara doesn't turn 16 by then. We have Bayumi, who's a 79 to 93 potential, 59 overall, left midfielder from Egypt. Nasir, who's 79 to 93 potential 6-3 center back. So we might bring him in. Maybe we'll give him some training too, just to get him up. Maybe get him into the cup squad. We have Nasir Al-Hindi, who we're going to let go. Potential of 88. We do have a ton of right wingers we, in midfielders, so we just don't need him, so we'll release him. We have Pian Chal Monk, who's a central defensive midfielder, 6'3", but as you saw, we already have a couple players in that position, so we'll let him go and release him. His potential just isn't there. We have Han Young Mun, who we've been given some training lately. He's a cam, 84 to 94 potential, 60 overall. So maybe if we can clear some space out for him, we'll bring him in in the second half of the season, but just want to leave him in the academy so he can keep growing without having to play him. We have Ishmael Bello, who's a left wing. We're going to let him go. His overall is just too low. It's going to take him too long to get anywhere, so we're going to release him. We have Niall O'Grady, 77 to 94 potential. We have Vasco Fuentes, goalkeeper out of Colombia, 6'5". He starts at a 65 overall, potential of 74 to 94. We will bring him in maybe for the next cup squad. Maybe we'll try it and sell Amaral in the January transfer window. So we'll, we'll wait on him. Don't want to bring him in. We don't want to start that contract earlier than we have to. Just give us a little bit more time with him on that minimum wage budget. We have Jason Campbell, 6'4", center back out of Ireland and not as good as we had hoped. He does have the the height though. So we'll leave him. Nah, well, I think we'll, we'll sell him on. We do have some other players that we can bring in if we really needed to. I didn't realize we had so many center backs, so we'll sell him on after just bringing him in. And I believe that will do it for us here in the Youth Academy. So some good players to keep an eye on. We'll have to see how they do. And then we will see what else we can bring in during the year. And then once we get to January, we can clear some space out and get some of these boys in play in the cup runs, hopefully. So it looks like the Miguel Cruz offer for $1.65 million has broken down. So hopefully that second offer will go through and we can get Cruz out in January, bring in some of the youth players to replace him. So guys, that'll do it for us here in this episode. We bring in some new players. We get our scouts back out. So it's been a good one. We tied against Doncaster, who's one of the better squads in the league right now. So it gives us a good idea of where we are. I think we do have a chance to definitely make the playoffs, if not make 
a push for an automatic promotion. In the next episode, we will come back and continue our Checker Trade trophy run against Portsmouth. And then we will continue our League One game against Plymouth Argyle. So hopefully we can grab three points against them, continue on through November, and keep pushing on for a promotion here in League One. But guys, that'll do it for us. I want to thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy the episode, make sure to hit the subscribe button, turn on notifications so you can always find out when the newest episodes are coming out. And if any of the youth players you guys want to make upgrades to, make sure to leave it down in the comments or maybe for our next scouts, if you want to send them to another country to make sure to let me know, I will keep track of it and send them out after the three months are up. And until next time, guys, have a good one. Okay. 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 Okay.